the greatest news of all time. And the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. When you come to him, affliction ends. I'm living in the new. I reject the old. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am under the new covenant. Uh, it's not about to come. It's already in force. It's already in force. My victory, your victory, my deliverance, your deliverance is blood bought and it is worth preserving. So, end of discussion. To me, that is good news. Hallelujah. This, this, this faces I'm seeing, they are the greatest of all the great. You, you, are, you are the chosen generation. And there is something about you that is royal. Uh, you check yourself out, check yourself out and say there is royalty in this part. Yeah, I'm not a mere man. I'm not ordinary. Tell yourselves. At least nobody cares enough for you to tell you about your royalty. But I want you to say to yourself, say, self, here. Yeah. There is royalty about you. Mm -hmm. You are great. God calls you great. You didn't make yourself great. Hallelujah. So this morning, we'll run through the scriptures and we'll have our communion and then we'll receive our baby. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. The word says in the habitations of the righteous, there shall be rejoicing. Yeah. There shall be rejoicing. Uh, the book of Acts chapter 19 says, So mightily grew was the word of God and it prevailed. There is no issue in this life that is no word generated. And there is no solution in this life that is not word resolved. So word produces problems and words resolves them. Now there are negative words, minor words, but they are not empty words. Words carry power. But there are also the original word, which is God's word. And God's word is called life words. Life words displaces negative words and then impossible imposes itself to produce life in abundance. I believe God's word today, as it comes to you, it will produce life. That's my faith. How about your faith? I have faith in God. That is what today will build you up. I have confidence through the Holy Spirit that the word that we hear today will not come in and go out. It will take residence inside of you. It will bring transformation. It will bring healing. It will bring wholeness to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. God's word will grow in you today. God's word will displace every negative word in your life today. God's word will procure your blessings today. In the name of Jesus Christ. I know there are people here struggling to, to stand right with God. And the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. When you come to him, affliction ends. When you show up in Zion, you are lifted and you are taken from glory to another level of glory. Nobody comes to Zion and returns empty. Zion is a place of transformation. It's a place of deliverance. While I speak now, the power of God is already healing people in the house. Because grace does not come to play. Grace changes stories. I am trusting God, your story will be changed today. 
I want to look at one verse of the scripture and then we'll look at several other. I'm, I'm looking at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews 2, 14. Um, it's a simple story, but it breaks the yoke. It paralyzes Satan. And it brings a man into the newness of life. It says, since all his children, I read in TPT translation, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 down to 15. It says, since all his children has, I mean, have flesh and blood, it says, so Jesus became human to fully identify with us. He did this so that he could experience death. He could experience death and annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser. I like that word, accuser. Accuser. Whoever accuses you, you must know them to be an enemy. Whoever is critical towards you, you must see them as you never do anything to please them. Whoever becomes critical against you, they have made themselves to become an adversary to you. Let's pray one prayer. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. It says, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. He said, the Lord will thunder against them from heaven and he will shatter them. Pray this prayer while you are seated. Father, according to your word, everyone that is an adversary from to my soul, according to your word, break out on them. Shatter them from above. Let them be scattered in the name of Jesus. Do you believe God will hear that prayer? Let's do it one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, any man or woman, anywhere all over the world, who made themselves to become an adversary of my soul, break out according to your word, and shatter them from above. Let them be scattered in the name of Jesus. Say amen for yourself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So he said in that Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 he said he did this so that he could experience death and annihilate the effect of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. He holds against us what? The power of death. And he was talking about who? Satan. Thank you. So Satan holds against the believer the power of death. So for Jesus to set us free, he himself had to participate in flesh and blood. So he needed to die like men dies. And through his death, he overcame, overpowered. He broke the power of death. He defeated Satan in his games and brought us harmony and victory. So now we can have life to replace death. Hallelujah. You didn't get that? So that in case there is anybody that is programmed to live before his time, it is counseled this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm speaking to somebody prophetically. If there is any sentence of death over anybody in the house, I don't know what you have done that causes you to merit that premature death. But I stand in my office and I declare, let that burden be lifted in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh no, you are not yet there. I said, let that burden be shattered in the name of Jesus. 
I suspend that instrument of death Amen. over your lives. Uh, remember what I said, you will see the signs, but you will escape. Amen. You will see the signs, but you will escape. Amen. Speaking by the Spirit, I say you will escape. Amen. Don't forget to send us a message. Let us know that God has performed. And I'm speaking with you this week. You will see the signs, but you will escape. By the power of the blood, I can't supermature death. In this meeting, anyone that is under this meeting this morning, uh, I engage by the power of the Holy Spirit. I scatter that plan. I dismantle that plan now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The world says to us, death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. We swallow that death. Yes. Now, by the power of his life yes. that we are about to receive in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Please sit. Let, let, let's get a little uh, further. He said, he holds people under the power of death. He said, by embracing Jesus Christ, by embracing death, Jesus sets us free. Those who live their entire lives in bondage to the torment and the dread of death, Jesus has set free. So there is death and there is the fear of death. Now some, there are people here, maybe one or two, you had revelations recently, like our evangelist said. You have revelations recently, and see yourself died. One or two persons in the house, you've seen revelation that you were attacked actually, and you died. Now this will be your deliverance today. Yeah. The promise of, of, the, of the Father concerning us is that I will give men a ransom for your souls. Now I speak because I have the authority to speak. I declare, let another one go down for you to rise in the name of Jesus. There shall be no given a ransom for your souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 22. Quickly, let's get there. Luke chapter 22, verses 19 to 20. Luke 22. Talking about Jesus, our perfect example, our model. God, the Son himself. He spoke these words. He said, then he lifted up a bread. And after praying a prayer of thanksgiving to God, he gave each of the apostles a piece of bread, saying, this loaf is my body, which is now being offered to you. Always eat to remember me. Always. He didn't say at a time for some time. Always. I, I, I like TPT. That's what I'm reading. Always read. This is not dispensational. He is an instruction forever. And King James, this version, he will say, This do in remembrance of me. How long, for how long do you like to remember Jesus? I want to remember Jesus as long as I live. So this must never get out of your sight. It should be your practice as long as you remember Jesus. Go further. It says, after supper was over, he lifted up the cup again and said, This cup is the blood of the new covenant I make with you. You may not read like that in your scripture, but in TPT, this is the way it reads. This is the cup of the new covenant that I make with you. So there is a deal here. Somebody hearing me. 
And the initiator is Jesus himself. He is making a deal with you and I. Other people call it covenant. And we have the old covenant and we have the new covenant. But this is a new covenant. Somebody said this is a new covenant. So let me speak to your spirit. In case there are covenants that has been oppressive, repressive, and bringing injury or damages to your life, by the authority of this new covenant, we declare, let the old covenant be cancelled now in the name of Jesus Christ. If there's a new covenant, it means the old is not good enough. So every covenant that is becoming obsolete in your lives, because of the new revelation of Jesus, we cancel it. By the same blood of Jesus that is shed for us, we cancel it. Now, some of us will not understand that covenants are meant to last forever. Because in the spirit world, there are principles. The world of the spirit is governed by principles. And if you have agreement in the spirit, it is binding today, binding tomorrow, and binding for as long as there was nobody found who understands the covenant to reverse. So it is possible for those who led your families in the past, the decisions they made, it is possible for somebody in today's world to suffer from the decisions of the past. The choices mothers and fathers made in the past, it is possible to have consequences of them in our today's world. Until and unless somebody grows up and become mature and understand the place of covenant and then you can superimpose the new covenant over the old. I'm living in the new. I reject the old. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything done by my parents intentionally or erroneously that is currently bringing affliction to my life I revoke by the power of the new covenant in the name of Jesus Christ I break every negative covenant that is in force over my life in the name of Jesus Christ Say amen if you believe that so he said, it is a new covenant that I make with you. He said, and it will be it will be poured out as soon for all of you. Meaning it was before he died, but it's already poured out now. It's already poured out. So I am under the new covenant. Uh, it's not about to come, it's already in force. It's already in force. Some of you is already in force. Oh, God is at work in my life now. And through my lineage, everything is getting cleaned up. I'm getting cleaned up by the power of Jesus' blood. Oh, that's why the word says in Revelation 12, 11. Ah, uh, 11, 12. It says they overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And by the words of their testimonies. Hallelujah. My victory is in the blood. Hallelujah. My victory is in the word of God. And nothing can stop my victory. Because my victory is blood bought. And it is word secured. Hallelujah. Say amen if you believe that. The blood purchased it. And the word secures it. My victory. Your victory, my deliverance, your deliverance is blood bought. And it is word preserved. So, end of discussion. Amen. To me, that is good news. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That what I couldn't pay for, 
was paid for by the one who loves and cares for. What I was not able to bear, the one who loves and cares for me bears it. He bears the iniquity of us all upon himself. Thank you, Jesus. To me, this is good news. My title this morning says, The Greatest News of All Time. Amen. This is the good news I need. Yes. Do you need somebody to tell you how bad you are? Tell me. Do you really need anybody to point you to your errors and mistakes and your weaknesses? I know them already. They follow me everywhere. It's like a man and his shadows. When I look off my shoulders, I see my bad deeds. I see my inabilities. I see my weaknesses. Right there, there and to some of us, they are in notes. Hallelujah. But if I keep on gazing at my weakness, I will always have to look back. But as I gaze onto Jesus' perfection, I gain access to purity. I gain access to power. I gain access to self-esteem. Because everything certain as the accuser brethren can do is to point me backwards. But Jesus has no concern with my past. He is interested in my now and in my future. Oh, somebody help me shout hallelujah. He knows what lies ahead of me. And he knows. He came to give me what? Life in abundance. So he took my place in death and gave me his place in life. The Bible says, this is life everlasting. That you may know Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 17 verses 1 to 3. He said, this is life everlasting. That you may know him. Jesus Christ, who brought you life. Hallelujah. The knowledge of God brings us abundant life. And that life eats up death. Swallows death. So because of this Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, all that Jesus did was to participate in death. So that through his participation, he can paralyze permanently. The one that had the power and the control and the dominance over death. Who uses fear to torment and cage and enslave people. Who is the devil, the accuser. I know there are people here who have been accused to themselves. You came in feeling unworthy. You came in feeling filthy. You came in feeling, really, people are praising God. Can I possibly lift up my holy hands? There is nothing holy about my hands. My hands is bent there and here. But God is asking me to tell you this morning. If you will accept the good news of the kingdom, you will qualify to stand with the people and call yourself a saint of God. Hallelujah. That's what distinguishes life from death. That's what distinguishes the victims from the victors. If you accept this good news, you are transformed and translated from the kingdom of darkness to God's their kingdom. And you cease losing. You begin to win in life. Hallelujah. You begin to win. How many of us like to win from today onward? I am in the kingdom of winners. I will no longer lose again. Hallelujah. You don't lose anymore. You can't be in the company of winners and yet lose. You are in the winning team. That's the good news. I bring you good news today to say if you participate in this communion table, you are not going to be judged. You are going to be liberated from anything that defiles you. Anything you are struggling with as a person, I am trusting God that your liberty will come from this experience this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has become an obstacle and impediment in your lives, 
as you participate this morning, this will procure your deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. So that it will be said about you that you were once a loser, but now he made you a winner. For me, that's good news. It will be said concerning you that you were once a victim, but now he made you a victor. To me, that is good news. It will be said concerning you that you were sick when you came in here, but now you will be healed by his stripes. And to me, that is good news. That it may be said concerning you that you walked in here laden and burdened with all manner of yokes, but that you left this place after the experience with this communion, that you left this place with a supernatural, Amen. eating up every deformity, Amen. that weakness turns to strength. Amen. To me, that is good news. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you want the good news of God's kingdom? Amen. This is power display. The power of God in display. The word says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it said, He that committed sins of the devil, because he sinned from the beginning. Now he went further to say, This is the place I like the most. He said, For this purpose. Help me say, For this purpose. Another word for purpose would be reason. For this reason, the Son of God shows up. Other times you know, say manifest it. <laughs> I like show up. For this reason, the Son of God shows up that He may destroy. He didn't say to live side by side, but to destroy. How many? All the works of the devil. This morning, I engage your spirit to understand that there is no work of Satan that is allowed to prevail. After this experience in the name of Jesus Christ, all the works of Satan shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Give me your faith. I said, all the works of Satan shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Headache is a work of Satan. Sickness and disease is a work of Satan. They don't come from God. Your God is too good to do evil. Sickness, infirmity, lack, poverty, anything you can name that does not bring joy, they don't come from your father. And they are the works of Satan. So I speak to you in the name of Jesus that as we participate in this this morning, all the works of Satan shall be destroyed in Jesus' name. So can I ask you to rise on your feet? Let's do this quickly. I want it to be very fast. I'm sure that you are ready. Every one of you, I want you to lift up your faith and believe God. We have come to Calvary's cross right now. We are standing before Calvary's cross. And let us know that no man cometh to me that by any means I will cast away, says the word. If you are coming to Jesus with your heart open, if you are coming to Jesus, Plus all your body, come unto me, he says. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. All you that are laden, that are, that, are, that are heavily laden, and you are weak and worried, he says, I will give you rest. I want you to pray just very short prayer, or pray with the whole of your heart. I want you, even if you feel you are born again, I want you to re-echo in your spirit that I belong to God. I belong to you. I will dedicate myself to you. I am the child of the kingdom. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I recognize you today as the God over my flesh. I submit myself, body, soul, and spirit to your Lordship. I invite you to dominate me, to live in my life, to live in my life and direct my paths. I surrender my body, my soul and spirit to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I renounce sin. I renounce Satan. I renounce all the works of the enemy. I surrender completely. 
I receive the life of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus. Believe it. Believe it. Something happened. Let's give Jesus a clap of it. Something happened. Release your power. I will receive this with a lot of submission. With a lot of humility, oh God. We celebrate what you did on the cross. Let the power of resurrection enter this now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.